Alrighty there folks, and welcome to the Conacher Podcast channel. This is not a continuation of the Three Kingdoms period, but in fact, it is a special episode about the Mid-Autumn Festival. So like I said, for this week we move away from the Three Kingdoms period and we're going to dive into the Mid-Autumn Festival that took place earlier this week. It is always on the 15th day of the 8th lunar month. The reason being that the moon shines the brightest on this particular day, among other things. Now please, please, don't ask me to go through the lunar calendar cycle today. It's confusing when I have grown up with nothing but the Gregorian calendar for all my life. I will do an episode purely on the lunar calendar someday in the future, but not today. So, I will attempt to find out the origin of the festival, so when this tradition started, as well as tell a famous love story related to the festival and how it is celebrated in China today. Don't worry about the little break from the Three Kingdoms period. I will dive back into it in next week's episode. So the question I have is this, when did the Mid-Autumn Festival begin? Officially, Zhong Qiu Jie, the name of the festival in Mandarin, began during the Tang Dynasty. A direct translation can be derived in this way. Zhong usually means centre or middle in Chinese. Qiu is the Chinese word for autumn or fall for my American listeners, and Jie is a type of festival. So you put the words together and you have Zhong Qiu Jie. Despite the Mid-Autumn Festival officially being declared during the Tang Dynasty though, the history of worshipping the moon on this particular day goes way further back than that. According to ancient texts, the Mid-Autumn Festival began during the Spring and Autumn period. By all accounts, the first record of worshipping the moon on this day comes from Zhou Li, or what we know it as the Book of Joe, or in other cases, the Book of Rites. The Book of Joe, or the Rites of Joe, in a very basic term, is a book that was written to show rulers how to rule and organise their bureaucracy. Among other things, it would be arranging how to do worship and what that worship was. And of course, the Mid-Autumn Festival is one of these auspicious days that kings should definitely have taken a note of and pray to the moon on this particular day. So why pray to the moon? Well, there are three reasons for this, which I will get into now. The first is that it was the end of the harvest season. So all of the crops that were planted during spring and had now been harvested for the winter was over. And with that, a cycle of harvest had been completed. With the end of the cycle, a new one begins. Which brings me on to my second point. The ancient Chinese really liked circular shapes. When the moon is at its most circular shape in the year was, you've guessed it, the eighth month of the lunar calendar. And it was when the moon was at its brightest as well. So, when scholars and even peasants looked up to the sky during this time, they felt a cycle had just ended and a new one was just beginning. Therefore, in order to get the most of their winter and of course reap the rewards of an even better harvest for the next cycle, the people prayed to the moon. So how did the people pray to the moon? Well, they offered sacrifices to it. Now, it isn't the sacrifices, you know, that the Romans practiced where they would slaughter a pig or something to please the moon god. It wasn't like that. The sacrifices were much less bloody than that. The people would face to the moon, kneel before it, burn incense and offer food to the moon. The food that was offered was never meat, but anything that had a circular shape. For example, apples, oranges, melons, and mooncakes, which I'll get into later on. Anything that was round in shape was acceptable. This comes from the Chinese word yuan, which means circular. Then this brings me on to my final reason, 
the concept of Tuan Yuan. So you hear the word Yuan, right? Right? That means circle, remember? So Tuan Yuan simply means reunion. And, this, and in this case, it means family reunions. The Mid-Autumn Festival was a time from which all generations of the family would be reunited to enjoy the harvest together. So daughters who were married and stayed at the husband's home would come on back to see their parents and siblings and enjoy the plentiful food that had just been harvested. From what you can gather then, there is a theme to all of this, and that is the idea of circles and cycles. And that is pretty much it. There is of course a lot more to the festival that I have not written down, but this is me giving my listeners a basic overview of when and why Worshipping the Moon on this particular day became popularised and is still celebrated today. Now speaking of popularised, there is one very famous story that still gets told to children even today. This is the story of Ho Yi and Chang Er. time ago, in ancient times, there were ten suns in the sky at the same time. The suns, with their blistering heat, withered the crops and the people suffered on earth due to the unbearable heat. Just when there seemed to be no hope for the people, a hero emerged. His name was Ho Yi. Ho Yi, the best bowman to have ever lived, wanted to end the suffering of the people. So he climbed to the top of the Kunlun Mountains, and with his super strength, drew the bow of heaven. He took aim, and fired his bow into the sky. A few moments later, one of the suns exploded for all to see. Ho Yi, drawing his bow again, shot down the second sun. Another seven arrows whizzed through the sky, taking out all of the suns until only one was left in the sky. Finally, after much suffering, the people could live their lives without fear of being burned by the heat of the suns. Ho Yi, therefore, was so respected and loved by the people, and this is when he met his wife, Chang Er. Showing his love for the people, Ho Yi taught the boys and the men how to hunt, and how to survive in the new world that he helped to create. His wife, being kind and fair, helped the women on how to collect crops and to sow silk. Many people far and wide travelled to see the amazing couple and learn from them. One of these students was a man named Peng Lu. Due to his deeds to save the world, the Jade Emperor of Heaven granted Ho Yi an elixir to ascend to heaven and achieve immortality. But there was only enough elixir for one person Now, not wanting to leave his wife behind on earth, Ho Yi told his wife about the elixir, and together they both hid it in a secret place in their home, the treasure box. As Chang Le was hiding the elixir though, she was being watched by Pang Meng, who wanted to steal the immortal medicine for himself. Three days had passed by, and Ho Yi led his disciples to go out hunting. Peng Meng came to Ho Yi, coughing and spluttering, and told him he was ill, so he needed to stay behind. Of course, this was a lie. Soon after Ho Yi led the crowd to leave, Peng Meng, sword in hand, burst into the inner house and demanded Chang Er to hand over the elixir. Knowing that she could not resist Peng Meng, Chang Er made a prompt decision at the critical moment. Turning around, she opened the treasure box, took out the elixir and swallowed it in one gulp. As soon as she swallowed the elixir, Chang Er's body immediately began to float off the ground, and then she rushed out of the window and flew high into the sky. Knowing she couldn't see her husband again, 
Chang'e flew to the nearest moon she could find, so she could at least be close to him. Later in the evening, Hou Yi returned home to find the maids crying about what had happened while he was away. Infuriated, Ho Yi drew his sword and cut Peng Wang to pieces. Overwhelmed with grief, Ho Yi looked up into the night sky and called his beloved wife's name. To his surprise, he found that the moon was especially bright on this day, and there was a swaying figure just like Chang Wu. He ran to the moon, but as he ran three paces, the moon took three steps back. He then took three steps back, and the moon came forward three paces. And no matter what, he could not catch up with the moon. Feeling helpless and missing his wife, Ho Yi sent someone to Chang Lu's favourite garden. There, they put on the incense table her favourite honey, her favourite food, her favourite fresh fruit, and offer sacrifices to the moon in the form of incense. After the hearing the news of Chang Lu's becoming mort- immortal, the people set up incense tables under the moon, one after another, to pray for good luck and peace. Since then, the custom of the Mid-Autumn Festival in the world spread. And that, my friends, is the story of Ho Yi and Chang Er which is still told to children in China to this day. So speaking of to this day, nowadays, during the Mid-Autumn Festival, it is a time when people travel across China and people within Chinese communities across the world reunite with their family members. From here, they celebrate their time together with a large meal and with one particular dessert, the mooncake. Mooncakes are hard to explain. But I guess it's like sweet bread, with a stuffing of some sort. The name for the cake is Yuebi. And yes, you guessed it, it's circular in shape just like the moon is that day. You can get all sorts of stuffings within the cake as well. It could be sweets with fruits, it could have nuts in it, it could be salty, or some of them may even have meat in them. And there you have it my friends, a little bit about the Mid-Autumn Festival, or Jungchiojie. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and next week we will get back to the Three Kingdoms period and look at the establishment of Dongwu. So I look forward to seeing you then, but until next time, Jiu Jie Kuai Le!